Hello and welcome to the Alabama Public Health Training Network. Thank you for joining us today for our program, Ethical Issues in Public Health, Social Media. Continuing education credits have been approved for nurses and social workers for today's program. In order to receive credit for this training, you must watch the entire program, then complete and return the sign-in sheet and evaluation. While content may continue to be relevant, continuing education credit will only be awarded for one year for nurses expiring on December 30th, 2017, and two years for social workers expiring on December 30th, 2018. If you want to receive a social work continuing education certificate, then you will need to complete the social work test and send it in along with your sign-in sheet and evaluation. I'm Renee Carpenter, State Social Work Director for the Alabama Department of Public Health. And with me is Jim Sacco, a public health consultant based in Atlanta. Welcome, Jim. Great. Renee, thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning people on the uh, uh, video. Uh, we are here in Montgomery today talking about social media and uh, public health. Uh, you know, we're talking previously, if we'd been here 10 years ago, would we have had this conversation? I think we would have been talking about landlines and letters uh, 10, 15 years ago. Shall I write a letter or use my landline to do something? Uh, I was thinking, as I got ready to do this, how much has changed? Uh, I've updated a talk I've done before here and how much has changed since that. And probably in five years, where will we be? Uh, Part of what I, what I thought about is, is how technology changes, how media change. And uh, so the topic today, uh, as we're all thinking about public health ethics or how do we act in ethical ways and, and uh, where are breaches or potential breaches um, and, and our use of, of social media and, and thinking about how whether we're at work or at home, I guess part of what makes this difficult is social media means that line between what I do before five and after five is blurred. And so if I most topics, I'd say, well, your ethical practice until five, but clearly what you post on your way home, what you update in a video over what you did over the weekend, what else you put on social media affects your reputation, the health department's reputation. And, and so the tricky part of this is this is about how we live our lives in the age of social media and be ethical public health people because unfortunately, better or worse, those lines are blurred. Uh, and I think as they get better at snatching our electronic information and uh, controlling that electronic information becomes more complicated. I just think that separation between work and life is uh, that much more complicated. What I was thinking this morning as I got ready to do this, back in the day, those of us been around for a few years, I got a couple in the audience, uh, you would have an unlisted phone number, and that was your way of assuring your privacy in the world, right? Like, like everybody I knew in, in, in social work, nursing, and public health, you didn't list your phone number because you didn't want a patient calling you up, cussing you out, saying, hey, you bees diagnosed me with syphilis or whatever. Like, so we had an unlisted phone number, and that was it. That assured our privacy and was our guarantee. And what I thought is, well, A, do any of us still have a landline? B, uh, do they do unlisted phone? And the bottom line, it doesn't matter if you have an unlisted phone. Your access, people's access to our information, our location. I don't know how you'd protect yourself. Uh, you know, I remember, again, as I was getting ready to do this, I remember the first time, for some reason, I hit Google. I Googled my own address, uh, something, and a picture of my house popped up. Rhonda, check that out. Not just where Rhonda lives, but here's Rhonda's house, and here's her car in front, whatever else. And And so in some ways... The subtopic for this talk is the cat is kind of out of the bag. Uh, and I wish I could say here's a 100% way. Um, so we are just going to kind of talk about how the landscape we practice as public health professionals, uh, the landscape in which we operate is complicated. And sort of a, a decision-making tree for how we act in ethical ways with our use of social media in ways that minimize the complications. I'd, 
Uh, I wish I had a class called Here's How We Avoid Duplicative Relationship and, and, and Privacy Stuff. I mean, I think there's some important things we do on our end to protect patient confidence. On the other end, I don't know where you'd have to go, what kind of uh, bunker you'd have to burrow down into so that none of our personal information was accessible. I, I just don't know. I don't know that that exists anymore. So uh, the, 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 horse is, the horse is out of the barn. There he is. As I said, I always say mother and daddy bought a master's degree in social work. Uh, thank them for their hard work. Uh, uh, background uh, for anybody viewing, uh, I have uh, about a 30-year social work career, most of it somehow related to public health, mental health, substance abuse, and uh, have made my living most of the last 20-some, almost 25 years as a trainer. I went from being a real social worker, mixed bag of social work practice, hospital, uh, mental health, substance use, to being someone who trains health care providers. I always joke, usually I'm in the basement of a county health department somewhere, uh, often talking about sexual health, uh, obesity prevention, basically, if it feels good and it tastes good and it's bad for you, I'm somewhere talking about it. It's, uh, what a, what a job! And the, isn't that our role? Our, if if it tastes good, it feels good, it's bad for you, and we're there talking to people. Not to do it, Not to do it right? Anyway, so there's you some definitions up there. Uh, again, j just so we're all on the same page. Social media. We'll give you some examples. An internet-based application. The key phrase here: user-generated content. We're not waiting for Mayo Clinic to download something. I'll talk about those kind of websites. We're talking about how I feel like firing up my computer or my laptop or more often, certainly under 30, firing up my phone and offering an opinion, talking about how to make a burrito, talking about how I hate my boss up there at the public or something. Uh, <laughs> fire up your phone and say whatever's on your crazy mind at that particular time. Uh, electronic communication, online communities, again, I don't want to throw out the baby with the bath. Why are we talking about communities of people sharing information, ideas? I've got some examples as I was as I was rehabbing this. I thought, man, you know, there are some wonderful ways in which healthcare, in which public health, has been advanced by social media, even as some privacy concerns, other stuff come into play. This last definition: uh, Federation of State Medical Boards. We lost the citation here. I'll give you the example later, but as I uh, updated this talk, uh, the uh, Federation of State Medical Boards offers some great examples of how healthcare workers should use and what they could consider. And, and anyway, I, I give that credit because, uh, uh, again, as I, as I revamp this, that, that those resources were especially helpful. So let's talk about what we're talking about. Here's some examples up here. I want to talk about what I know and then folks in the room talk about what else? Facebook? Raise your hand on Facebook. I love my Facebook. No, come on now. I love my Facebook. Uh, Facebook is uh, the, the world's largest social networking site. I'll give you the figures now. Unbelievable impact of Facebook. Changed, uh, changed our language, changed our culture. Uh, basically, Facebook is a web-based spot where I go in and if I uh, want to talk about what I have for lunch, I'm going to tell all my friends, hey, y'all had tacos for lunch today. Ate a taco. Uh, I may also, as a user of social media, videotape my taco. <laughs> right? Don't we all videotape our lunch? Here's Jim eating his taco. And put that on my YouTube, that video on my YouTube, and the video is called, look at me eating this taco. It's delicious. Uh... I may take to Twitter, which I think is most people going to be on my phone, 140 characters or less. Hashtag Jim Taco Eating. Hashtag Taco Eating at Jim. Uh, talking about I'm ready for lunch. Where's my taco? Something about my lunch. Uh, LinkedIn. I'm going to brag about myself. Uh, if, if there were a, prof a profession of eating Mexican food, buddy, there's something I'd do well. Uh, finally, a career calling I could... Uh, Make living. LinkedIn, you put your professional stuff out there, professional networking site. Who's LinkedIn? Anybody linked? I'm linked but I forgot my kids. She forgot. <laughs> she half linked. Half linked. Boy, I'm in a room full of dinosaurs. This is going to be fun. I'm sorry to call you all out. Uh, LinkedIn, but no, Pat, you're going to have to get that password to be LinkedIn. LinkedIn. And LinkedIn is, uh, yeah, there's a reminder, remember your passwords or you ain't going to get nowhere on social media if you forget your passwords. LinkedIn is a, a professional networking site. I, 
I, I, I don't see that, I, I think there's a public health presence there. My read on LinkedIn is that it's a business person site. People in the business world tend to be more regular users of LinkedIn, but it's, it's a way to sort of professionally network. They say that some people hire uh, fire base, uh, higher recruit based on LinkedIn profiles and, and, and so there's stuff. Foursquare shows up uh, where you ate. Uh, often that's linked to your, to your mobile phone. Foursquare, you check in on Foursquare. So I'm walking into the taco stand. Uh, fluid, underline that. Fluid and constantly changing. Websites, phone technology, all have mobile apps. And again, as I was thinking through this talk, part of what comes to mind is we're not talking about kids firing up their computer anymore. Certainly, we're talking to people over 30. All the social media sites are on their phone. That that this is this technology is now something I hold in my palm, not something I'm on a desktop or laptop. What other social media sites? A couple come to mind, but what else do you use or know of? What's not on there that needs to be? Instagram. 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 Woo. Snapchat. Instagram. Kick. Snapchat. Instagram. Kick is video, young people video. Is that the one that limits the time of the video? It's short video on kick. Glide. Glide. I don't know. Glide, you scoop me. What's Glide? A bit another video. So Instagram, probably of those, the most popular. And what we're talking about here, uh, given my audience, what's the polite way to say this? I was thinking of major media over 30. If we talk about our young people, we'd invert this. Young, you ask young people, any young person, you're on Facebook, they look at you like you just came from Mars. Mm -hmm. I'm on Kick. I'm on Instagram. Snapchat. Snapchat. Um, Vine was in and out, but Vine is dying, I think. Vine, Vine didn't make it. So, again, you're talking about what's going on. Kids are interested in video-based stuff. Stay with me, Charlene. You're going to get there. <laughs> Stay with me. Do you own a mobile phone? Do you own a mobile phone? Uh, let's start. Do you have a party line still at home, or do you have... No, 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 we're not going to be that way. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's a real divide. The, again, we talk about most users. Absolutely, those are top four in order. But you talk about young people. They don't, they're tweeting. Some are tweeting. They don't know YouTube. It's the short. Kids seem to be drawn to short video, sharing with their friends, Instagram, kick. Do the other one. Snapchat. Glide. Snapchat. Glide. 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 Glide's the one I didn't know. Snapchat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But again, the idea that we, hey, here's me acting a goofball. I share it with my friends. Or whatever. I'm on a, I was uh, somewhere. Oh, I was, I said I was in California uh, last week and, and kids were doing some kind of dance thing uh, in the train, um, in the subway. I looked at the woman next to me. I said, is this a, she said, yeah, this is a normal thing. But their friends were videoing it. So I would send out a video. Here's me. Uh, doing a thing on the, on the video. Yeah, <laughs> we could, we could, uh, Anyway, so so fluid, constantly changing, and again, uh, age, gender, race, ethnicity, all factor into who's using what. So so uh, I, I'm talking about the the largest ones that middle-aged professionals. I'm gonna keep it real are, are using, but but again, not the ones that our young uh, consumers are using, and that that's important as we talk about how we reach people with health information. Uh, and, and again, moving from I'm going to my desktop computer to now it's all on my phone. Kids, I don't, I don't know that most young people under 25 even are worried about a computer or an iPad or whatever else. It, it's all in their phone. Their life is in their phone. Who, who's got young kids or grandchildren? You know, it, it, my right bill is all on the phone. They, uh, what, phone? Oh, what kind of phone? And yeah, 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 exactly. Do you have that phone? So. Uh, Anyway, so there's some great stuff. I thought I'd start our conversation. Some great stuff uh, about use of social media. And uh, as public health professionals, there's uh, some potential downside. Let's, uh, let's think about it for a minute. Uh, why don't you do just a quick grab two people beside you. And what I'd like you to do, and those of you watching on the video, just make your notes right on the slides there. Um, each of you, just grab your partner beside you, all going to be a three. Uh, I would argue there are some good things about use of social media, like professional networking. And I would suggest that for all of us who participate, there's some potential downside as public health professionals. Like I said, just to get our wheels going, three, four-minute brainstorm potential benefits to use of social media, potential risk for public health professionals. Yeah? Quick three, four minutes just with your partner, and then we'll talk about it.
Another or disadvantage of this is a lack of physical or no uh, personal interaction. Personal interaction. And I, I, of course, I have exposure. Um, this, sometimes my, I try really hard not to have a um, in my Facebook, in the bar, she's called all right, let me check in. Okay. I just want to get our, our juices flowing because I, I, uh, I, I'm guessing as we, as we think about audiences here, there's some of you I think probably need to step up and consider doing more social media, I suspect, as we, as we reach across the state, there's some people need to back away a little bit or think through the risk. That's why I wanted to get started. Uh, my group in back, back there, I asked you to think about good things about social media. For, as public health professionals, possible benefits. Um, what you see? With, with the WIC program that I work with, Please. we have a Facebook page. So a benefit is to get information out quickly. You bet. And especially like clinic closures or different things when there's weather-related things so the participants don't go and it's closed and they had to, you know, work so hard to get a ride and things of that nature. But on the, on the flip side, there can be a lot of, you know, misinformation when participants get on and start talking. So there you, go. you have to have somebody that manages it and constantly yep. looking at it yep. and so yep. can provide correct yep. the correct information. So it engages it engages our our, our consumers. Absolutely. It, it creates a presence for us in the community. And I gotta say if some health educator came up to me and said, Well I think we just need to create one more four color trifold brochure <laughs> I'd say if your target population is fifty seven year old people and over, maybe but the brochure is dead, y'all. The brochure is dead. And a great example of that is with WIC, we now have an app as well. Yeah, exactly. And so it has our food exactly. brochure on there. So where when, and I, it's funny because I went out with one of our investigators <laughs> and I said, oh, I forgot my food brochure. I'm not 57, but. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. I forgot my food there you go. And he said, that's okay. I got my phone. Here it is, baby. Yeah. So it's, it's great. Yeah. 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 It's Absolutely. Media so, in there. So it's meeting people where they are, but if it works, it's a place where there's a virtual conversation. And if there's a virtual conversation, how do we as public health manage the conversation? And you'll see in just a little while, there's some really lovely peer-peer health sites. Hey, I've got arthritis. What do you do? Hey, I've got arthritis. What do you do? But what control do we have once people start talking about their health conditions? And what else? Risk and benefit. What you got, Bill? It, well, Good things? Back on what they're talking about, the brochure, you know, We've still got 150 of those brochures. We got, we're not going to reprint until we use them all. Yeah, yeah. You can update that information immediately. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. There you go. So no printing cost, no getting permission, I think, to get printing done. Here you got to get 8, 12 signatures. Isn't that the way you know? Uh, and, and so the idea is somebody logs on, says let's update the address, our closure, our service availability, uh, and your update is done. You're, you're updated in real time. Oh. it takes to get those brochures mailed out to the counties. You bet. And you bet. Versus but, I'm going out to a health fair instead of lugging. Think about these people threw their back out. Talk about working, lugging these 87. Stacy, that was you lugging these 87 boxes of, of pamphlets. And now I'm talking about girls, here's our app. Or maybe one postcard. Here's how to download our app where you show people in real time. It's all there on their smartphone. 
Carolina? I was just, I was just, when they were saying this, I've been gone almost uh, three years, and I was thinking about all the meetings we'd have and about the brochures and how long it would take to get a brochure you out. Bet. And you're right, you, ha you have to get a lot of signatures and everything. And I'm assuming that you're still having those meetings that one person just doesn't put it out there that folks still meet. And it, we have a conversation about our yeah, Facebook. And the brochure looks yeah, like. Yeah, what the brochure those, looks yeah. like. And we still have uh -huh. the printed copies. Yeah. 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 But yeah, you still have the meetings of what it's going to uh -huh. look like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What's and, and that could be the negative also, is that if you only have that one person that's putting that, that message out, there you go. what if that message hasn't been vetted or... Yeah. or uh, at least run through the proper channels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's a there's a lot of health departments with one young person. I'm gonna keep it real here, who who does their media or couple young people, and and they go to the over 50 crowd. Say, hey, I'm gonna blah blah blah, and the person go, oh, okay, whatever, and didn't check the content, doesn't even know what they're talking about. I'm gonna update. It. I'm gonna get us on a kick. Well, okay, she thought that was a soft drink. <laughs> Supervisor thought it was a soft drink. Yeah, give me, bring one back from from me. Uh, that was an energy drink, and no, we now have a video uh, thing of our nurses acting crazy. What else? Benefits, risk, social media for public health. Um, emergency alerts. There you go. There you go. We, we got we got a problem here. Uh, we got a weather emergency. We got an outbreak of something. Uh, One of the risks that I'm seeing a lot of too is the blurring of professional boundaries. Man, absolutely. I, I would. I would put that highest on the list, mm -hmm. that, that as a regular Facebook user, uh, there is a way in a city of six and a half million people where people creep up into my, do you want to be friends with this person? And I go, no, I do not because of whatever. And so there's a way in which I think the technology which is crafted to encourage networking, it, which is designed to bring people together doesn't understand our professional bound. We may not, but also the software, I think the software, now I've got no stake in this. My hunch is software is designed to find cookies and bring us together. I used, uh, uh, as a clinician, so, I, so I'm a, a, a part-time therapist, and I used a, some kind of pay site where I'd swipe their card, and I used a, a system to take payment, electronic payment, from consumers, and consumers who paid me started showing up as potential LinkedIn matches. Now, the only connection was that I'd swiped those credit cards and they were identified. And so from my perspective, please don't sue me if you're watching this video, from my perspective, there is some kind of cookie or software or something so that the people that orchestrated that credit card payment linked back to that person knew the, it can't be an accident. Please. PayPal and you're using PayPal Square or um, I got They're all linked. Yeah. PayPal. Because mm -hmm. you know you got to use your email address. If yeah. You use your email yeah. Address, yeah. 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 And then you log in, then it'll pop up on your side, on the side. Yeah. Yeah. There. Exactly. So anybody else, you just you Googled uh, 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 shoes at Macy's, and then in a minute, all of a sudden Macy's are coming up. Or you go, how did? Yeah. That's the kind of thing where you can do what you can. But are there, yeah, so, so I would say breaches of personal professional boundary has to be near the top of the risk list. And, well, and in your example, couldn't you eventually work it back around where you'd have a HIPAA violation? Kind of. Because you bet. If, they, if you ended up friending them and then somebody else asked, well, how do you know so and so? Oh, well, they're a patient of mine. Well, then technically you've just disclosed. You're going to prison. Therapy with you. you bet. And, <laughs> yep. It's just a mess waiting to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. But. But just, yeah, just the idea, and, and, and then we get into that business of uh, people in smaller towns. I mean, as I think about people who may be participating, some of you come from smaller towns. As it is, that line between patient and provider is really difficult in smaller towns. And I think this is why some of us choose not to be on these types of sites. There you go. To prevent. So your answer is just, I'm, I'm going to check out. And, and again, <laughs> I, I, think, I think it's an option. It's really hard to say there'll be no overlap, but I, I, I've been in most uh, county health departments, I've been in many county health departments, I think most in Alabama, and it's real common that people say, well, there I was at Walmart, and patient came up and said, hey, thanks for the pregnancy test or the <laughs> breastfeeding or STD, you know, they don't care, there you are, there you are at Walmart on Sunday, they just, whatever. So, so some real benefits, professionally, networking, connecting information, 
benefits personally, y'all who aren't on it, I gotta say it's great fun to watch people's grandchildren on on the Facebook. Mm -hmm. I've got yeah. my cousins, grandchildren I've never met, but out there in Colorado, I'm watching her play with her grandbabies and those kids growing up. And what did people have for their Thanksgiving? There's something of of staying connected that's lovely. But do I want my patients in my business? Do I want I want to have control over that, and and uh, it's complicated. It's complicated in the digital. Any other benefits or risks? What else? Are One that we know that I recently learned here, um, in locating patients, um, different people who work in our um, certain division. One what about SDD division um, have specific access to certain websites and channels that we don't, where you can't get a patient on the phone, but if you go to some particular websites or links and mm. you send them a message, well, guess what? You've located your patient. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, risk, the risk factor that I've noticed, and definitely not in this department because it doesn't happen yet, no. is that, um, you know, <laughs> the lack of interaction, you know, because of personal interaction because people on mm -hmm. Facebook and the amount of time that you lose on a work day by being on Facebook yeah. Yeah. all day, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, yeah. You know, I just want something copied or something ran off. Yeah. Oh, how dare you? I'm on Facebook. <laughs> but, you know, people, we don't move. We're just sitting all day. And, you know, we're already fighting obesity problem. Anyway, but um, this thing is... We're talking not about ADPH, but other, gov other government agencies in other states. Never ADPH. Thank you. Let's clear that up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. People obsessed with the darn thing. Yeah. yeah, and this whole idea, we are good. I love DIS getting on the right side to find people. That's yeah. a great story. Sure they do. Sure they do. Yeah, so so I can go on certain sites and find who's where, find find who I can't find. Uh, you know, it raises a question. I'm, I'm uh, starting a new project where we're training. It's a data sharing project where we're training HIV uh, prevention and STD people to share clinic information if somebody's positive and, and out of care. And so the whole idea is the clinic said we hadn't seen them for a while, HIV care, and that's obviously problematic. And But we know sometimes the prevention people know where they were tested or sometimes the STD people had them in their clinic last week. And so the whole idea is let's get data to talk to each other. A good thing for the public health, good, but data sharing, crossing, yeah. So. Good benefits are awareness activities. Like um, sometimes just to let community know about particular activities that are going on, um, particular programs that your agency may have that yeah. are those mitigated programs yeah. that no one knows about. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, and we've I've used that um, yeah. to kind of let the community know that hey, this is a service that's out here. You bet. And. and um, I wonder if media is going to kill the health fair. Sorry, I've already killed the brochure, Rhonda. While you're out, I killed the brochure. Brochures are dead. What, what is and, doing with the health fair? Because I still do a lot of those. Yeah. Um, we go, but our tables are minimized with brochures. We have that that Q um, that code, the QVC code. Sure. Um, that bar they got to scan it, y'all. If, if they can't it, scan it, yeah. So everything got to have a code. Got to have their smartphones. You bet. I mean, it's you hard bet. to find a flip phone these days. <laughs> You know, so I had the kids, last one in the world I traded in last right, year, so, so you're right. Kids, um, you know, it's easier, like if you're a banner or there's yeah. something on your table, a business card that has that code on it. Sure. Kid, a kid will pick that up. Scan it. And later on, they'll scan it. Yeah. And so now my peers don't know that I'm really interested yeah. in this particular yeah. subject. Great. Great. I've got this information, and I can use it and go to it whenever I want to. Yeah, exactly. And mm -hmm. nobody will exactly. ever know, and I won't be bullied, judged, or yeah. stigmatized because yeah. I'm interested in yeah. this. Yeah. In terms of benefit, what I heard is I get to go at my time when I'm interested to the information I'm interested in as a public health consumer. Fabulous. You know, as, as opposed to I'm going to drive a box of brochures to something and hope you show up. And when, again, some of that is changing. So, so some good things and some potential risks, important risks. So One of the risks that, that I've yeah. been seeing, too, is um, that 140-character limit. A lot of people seem to be losing the ability to write a complete sentence. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I, I'm seeing um, acronyms that are not medical right. when we're in right. the medical profession, yeah. um, abbreviations that may mean something on one certain website, but they, don't, they aren't yeah. legitimate. 
uh, don't write I, don't write IDK in a medical right. record, for instance. Right. right. <laughs> Ask the doctor why she's sick. IDK was his response. <laughs> Not okay. No, yeah. And yeah. Generational differences, too, because my friend's mm -hmm. mother would use LOL thinking it said lots of love, and somebody would say their dog died, and she'd go, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Did you understand? <laughs> <laughs> he just laughed at his dead dog. Yeah. 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 yeah, different yeah. things. You know, that and, and I just want to say, I mean, I think that the broad, the broader question is about young people's use of social media, and 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 I, I just want to say, I would, I facilitated a meeting several years ago of public health personnel people from across the country, and and there was a personnel expert who came in and said, look, your workforce is retiring in massive waves. And you're going to have to adjust your workplace to meet them, to meet younger, the way younger people work, which includes use of media. And so how do we say, well, this is still a medical record that's subpoenaable in a court of law. We're not going to have no IDK or LOL, whatever abbreviation, and yet find a way to accommodate. And, and so that's about employees, but certainly as we think about consumers of public health, we are changing. I think you could make an argument most places that we're actually behind the curve, um, that, that, in, that in fact our consumers, and again, that my bias is I do a lot of teen pregnancy prevention. So you're talking about 14, 15-year-old kids. We're here and they're out there. And so certainly as it relates to our adolescent population, we're, we're, not, we're not where they are. And it, it's going to take a lot to catch up. So just kind of thinking through uh, some of the benefits and, and hopefully moving forward with use of electronic media in ways that minimize the risk. That's the, the goal. Any, all right, poll in the group. Any, anybody in the room? Facebook, Pinterest. Didn't, we didn't say Pinterest. For Pinterest, Tumblr. Uh, anybody, your social media, your Facebook, your YouTube, uh, who uses it, who checks hourly? I'm dying right now. She I'm can't say it. it. She can. <laughs> Baby, go check your phone. This is why we're here. <laughs> Hourly? Uh, every day, every single day. I, I'm going to raise my look at a yeah. bunch of every single day. There, my camera person is every single Good, good. Uh, only once a week. Just once a week. Wow. I bet you got a lot of money. Man, you got a lot of good things. Seldom or never. You don't like it. I have kicked because I have a son because he <laughs> told Who's me. Whose kids made us? There you yeah, go. There you go. Made me. And I don't even know if it's kicked. Now I'm probably supposed to have something else. But I just He's going to move on. This is it. Find me on I, kids. I have a life. I just I do not okay. have time to okay. do that. The, the, oh my God. And like Meredith. <laughs> you got on nothing. I, I just started. I, I might meet you on the flip phone. I just got the, the yeah. Mac Daddy phone at the saying. end of class. But I'll here's your rationale. When I started the workhouse. So I'm here and I got a life. Your reason for being slow to come in? I have a little one. And so I'm away from him all day. I'm here at work. And so, so you're not going to be in home, on your phone with your baby. No, I, I want to be with him. Oh, my God. Yeah. There are so many cool apps for babies. <laughs> <laughs> you can like a missionary. Like a missionary. Oh your kid, anybody got kids? Your kids, your grandkids under 25. Mm -hmm. How often? Oh, oh, by the minute. Yeah. Yeah. Hourly? Yeah. Yeah. Hourly? Yeah. Hourly? Yeah. 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 Bill? My children at, at their school, they don't have textbooks anymore. Everything mm -hmm. is on an iPad mm -hmm. yeah. or, or so a notebook. On a screen. So they're, they're on the computer literally all day, yeah. mm -hmm. even at school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the cost of the software for those electronic textbook, textbooks is astronomical. Is it real? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, to me, I think it should be cheaper yeah. because it's not a textbook. And uh -huh. it's, yeah. it's not. So again, as we think about our, our consumer and public health and what you're saying, as I ask you who's under 25, is, oh, heck, yeah, all, all day long. And, and again, you know, I'm going to sound like an old fuddy-duddy. I do think when people go to dinner with their children and they're on their phone or when people's children bring their phone to the supper table, I just want to scream about it. You know, I do feel like there's something about it, and yet has the train left the station? How you can build, how you won't get that phone? Do you pry that phone out their hands? What are your limits on it? Are you able to pry it ever out of their hand? Mm -hmm. Why I would I do that? that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, 
Please. Saying, my daughter, I have a 20 year old. Oh, gosh. And, um, so she so, lives, in her, lives through her phone. Yeah. yeah. But what's, what's cool is because she's 20, um, on Sundays, we would sit together and we would play um, Fruit Ninja together. And it was a must be a game. It's a game. It's a game. It's a game on our phone. Fruit but Ninja. But that was, that was more of our bonding time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you yeah. get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, on, you know, on Sundays we're sitting there. And it's competition for us because we're fighting who's yeah. winning. Yeah, yeah, But, you know, that was time that we spent together. Yeah, she, yeah. She's 20. Absolutely. And she still wants to have that time with me. Yeah, and yeah, it, yeah. it was mm -hmm. Fruit Ninja. I was all in. Yeah. You know? And there's a, there's a way for those of us outside to say it looks like a way to be disengaged from people. And yet I think for young people, I, I'm talking about texting now. Oh, my oh, yeah. God. Who are 24-7 texters. That is their way of connecting. And the, so, so it looks like I'm disconnected, but on the other hand, it is about connection. Come on, bro. For, for several years, the, the school system wouldn't let, allow the students to have phones in the right. school system, right. but that has just completely gone so away. So they gave up. And uh, so I have a 16-year-old, and he, he, Dad, I need this, I need that. Mm -hmm. You know, he's constantly throughout the day, you know, yeah. plans have changed at school. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not staying after school. I am staying after school. Yeah. We, we do have rehearsal. Practice has been canceled, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and so I need a ride. I need yeah. Yeah, all of those yeah. things are uh, immediately. I know what's going on. Yeah, and yet I'm supervising. Let me step back to public health. I'm an ADPH supervisor, and I look down the hallway and I see a dozen youngsters in their cube on their smartphone. <laughs> Renee is nodding, and I'm thinking, "Come on, y'all! Taxpayers ain't paying, oh, but they may be updating our Facebook page." or whatever, or is this just the new reality? Again, I don't have your answer, but I think the questions about where information comes from, what communication is, has changed dramatically. And I love your example of your phone technology being a source of communication for you and your daughter. And as we talk about how we prevent disease and protect the public health good, uh, DIS and other people on phone tracking people so they can notify people of their STDs. I mean, it's a different age. It's a, a, a different age and important question. So, uh, do we use our media? How much? Whatever else. So, here's the deal. Uh, a Pew Foundation study says we as healthcare workers use at the same rates as the general public. So, if you think about sort of are there differences for people in public health versus people in other industries. or uh, Again, I think there's a significant age difference. Not to name the elephant in the room, but I think we've seen that demonstrated here in our small uh, taping room today. Uh, but but in, in terms of just is there a difference, we use media at the same rates as the general population. And so what's happening is uh, people are blogging, Facebooking. Uh, it didn't, we haven't talked about blogs uh, again. Any anybody who hadn't come out on, on blogging or reading blogs, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Uh, again, uh, some really interesting uh, health information. I guess I'm back to the professional role of blogs. I haven't just de described. Blog is my sort of personal web page. So, so for those who aren't familiar, uh, I, I'm thinking about a, a, a colleague of mine who. Uh, was on a very extended overseas trip, uh, again, a, a professional trip, but whose blog around the professional a aspects of his journey were there. of another friend who, at 30-something, with her husband, joined the Peace Corps, went to Malawi in their 30s. They are blogging about that experience. And so, uh, again, most some of it personal, but again, through the lens of here are the public health issues. They're both public health people. So here are the public health issues we're encountering. So it's a sort of ongoing whatever else. Um, again, the other I would highlight is the use of Twitter in the scientific community. Uh, again, you think it's uh, trying to not make any uh, pro political uh, <laughs> present day references. Uh, lots of people using Twitter all over. Uh, but I have a, 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 a close friend who's a bench science, hardcore science in and what she says is in the science community, people are tweeting and following. She says at scientific meetings, bench science, she's a biologist, they're, they're all tweeting and sharing. And so you think of Twitter just as a weird, chatty, where did I go for lunch, or oh, don't you love Beyonce, or whatever, 
uh, but among certain professionals and health professionals. I mean, I mean, certainly anybody following anybody. Do I have any Twitter use? Well, I'm going to mention, Please. like, um, the other day was World AIDS Day. Yeah. So iHeartRadio, they did a hashtag. Um, it was instead of iHeart, I it was I uh, Go Red or something like that. Yeah, Go Red was the thing. Uh -huh, for, for World AIDS Day. Yeah. So they were, every all day long, you heard, you know, log on, hashtag I, um, I read. Yeah. Which is to promote the awareness of World AIDS Day. Yeah. yeah. You know, so yeah. that was a Twitter deal. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, so again, while you think of, of some of these media as being about merely the social function, there is a health, there's a health function exactly that's going, including HIV prevention. Um, so here are the numbers for you, uh, a few numbers. Uh, cell phone users, 40% of cell phone users uh, uh, use social networking on their phone. I would argue that for young young people under 25, it's got to be in the in the 80, 90 percentile. Uh, this is all cell phone users. Um, uh, and what you'll see, this is 2013, 2014 data. Look at the one year increase. What 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 I see uh, again? That's the one. Oh, 2012, 13. But just see the one year increase. And, and and I would I would guess that that trend with most of those continues. And so. So, and if we, we, if we did, it'd be interesting. I, I didn't have the, I, I think this was just a one-year snapshot. But if you went back and sort of said, what's the 10-year uh, difference or even five-year difference, I think it would be extraordinary. So both of these showing the growth. Uh, uh, and, and what's interesting about this study, let me read it so I get it right. Uh, the fastest growing group of cell phone users using social network, the fastest growing age group. Anybody got it? Fastest growing uh, age group for cell phone use, social media. Eight to twelve. I would say thirteen to fifteen. Fifty to sixty-four. Wow. <laughs> Mama's saying, "If I'm going to talk to this kid, I got to get my kick together." That's exactly where it is, right up front. That the well, I, I can understand that. Sure. With children living out of state. Sure it is. Yeah. And it's Having crazy. FaceTime with Why Grandmama. Do a calling and people work that into where you where we used to say. Or you call your grandparents every Sunday night at six yeah, o'clock. Yeah. Now it's more like, okay, you're going to do a call with the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, the yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just trying to. Yeah, I, I've used a couple of terms. Skype is a a, a, a web-based video video chat. So we're going Viper. Skype. Viper. I don't know Viper. Viper is same thing, same technology. Uh, FaceTime is a. a, a Probably shouldn't say that. a particular a particular uh, <laughs> a particular computer company, particular large computer company has a. a, a uh, a thing called FaceTime and same thing. Tango, Tango. Skype, yeah. Skype, Uvu, mm -hmm. yeah. Scoop, Scoop. Yeah. Uh, all ways in which I can do a video chat with someone. I, I would, I would, I would guess. I mean, I think um, my daddy, learned in his 80s, uh, he's a, a master gardener. He wanted to learn about uh, plant disease and, and hook up to a community master gardener. So sometime in his 80s, daddy learned how the internet worked and. Uh, it was a, it was a, a painful painful process for all involved. Uh, as if you've ever put an old person on a, on a computer, uh, but it, here's somebody in his 80s who said, "Well, I want to learn what's in that box and buy me a box and go we'll figure out how that works because of all that information I want." So I suspect it's about information. I suspect it's also about Facebook and your grandkids. It's also free. I mean, there if you're you out of the country, uh -huh. I can. I was able to. To do that uh, over the summer, we were out of the country, and my children were able to talk to us yeah, via yeah. the internet yeah. at, at no cost. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've got a, a FaceTime set up. My significant other's in Indonesia, and Saturday I'm going to do a FaceTime in Indonesia, and it's like a real time visit on phone. So, yeah. So, again, I, what I think is interesting, though, is. is Fastest growing group, 50 to 64. So, so again, we think about, boy, public health, we better, uh, if we're going to do teen pregnancy, we better bring our A game. What I'm also saying is if we're going to do Wise Woman, one of the great programs, one of the finest programs here in ADPH, uh, we better think about, hey, mama's on her smartphone. And, and uh, thinking about Wise Woman participants, breast and cervical cancer uh, uh, patients who, for whom cardiovascular risk is being eliminated with some great intervention, but she's on her phone. Ron, some, some, a bunch of your folks, fastest growing groups for social media cell phone. Maybe we need to think about programs like that, not relying on tricolor 
brochures and whatever else, but thinking who's got their phone, what's on their phone, how are they using social media, right? We have a Facebook account. There you go. Facebook was One English and one um, Spanish. Beautiful. It's really interesting. Our uh, Spanish one is way more utilized. Really? Yeah. Way more utilized. Mm. See, I don't, I don't, uh, again, it would be fun to drill down this day to think about age, race, ethnicity. Uh, and certainly, I think we talk about which websites and how people get information. Uh, I, I think there'd be some significant differences. Um, and, and I'll put that challenge back on everybody. I, I know this, this video goes out to people all over the state to think through what's going on in your community. Because even sitting up here in Montgomery talking about here's what's going on statewide, I think the most important use of this conversation is for people in counties to say what's going on in Coleman, which media in Coleman, by which age range, and who's on their phone in Coleman, and uh, extrapolate that to other uh, county health departments, other regions, so that we could figure out, because I would argue there's probably some regional difference, in addition to age, mm -hmm. gender, language, I bet there's also some regional differences. And our county health departments, our regions have their own websites linked to their own health department and we have our state website so you've got to think about what information to put on your the, Coleman for example what they would put on their actual yeah. website yeah. their web page yeah. and that risk that Bill talked about earlier who's watching the 158 uh, Facebook pages for the great state of Alabama and is there consistency in that messaging and it, it's great that we're doing it but just uh, again back to our benefit risk conversation uh, so here's your numbers there, again, uh, uh, just to, to not spend too much. I guess we hadn't talked about Google+. Plus. Google+, Plus has been an attempt to seize the energy of Facebook and some of the other things. It had, uh, what's a nice way to say it so we don't get sued? It's had trouble all along getting people engaged and uh, trying to compete with uh, some of these others. On Google+, Plus, you can social network like you do on Facebook. You can share video like, like you can on YouTube. Uh, uh, but but never had it. It captures everybody in Gmail. But uh, who's got a Gmail address? Anybody? Do you use Google Plus? Keep your hand up. One. No. One. Half. Well, half. Half. So so in our unscientific study of of uh, ten Gmail users, half of one. Right. Yeah, as we learned, you got you got to hold on to your password. Uh, so we've talked about everything. And Pinterest. I talked to Pinterest. I don't even know what Pinterest is. Website, social media. Uh, I get drunk. Well, uh, tell, <laughs> tell us what Pinterest is, Melissa. How dare you? She said Pinterest is. Well, it's just a. I guess I don't. It's a social networking type thing, but it's more about ideas. And if you have a particular interest, you then you're able just to hook in. And there's. I know I have a social work page, and you get great. Oh God. You can get like therapeutic techniques and different approaches. On Pinterest. And, yeah, on Pinterest. All I, all I just Google coffee cake, and I get into four thousand coffee cake recipes. Yeah. If you exercises for patients and and then oh. just, and just really neat kind of things <laughs> that great social work jokes. And then, but you also, I'm redoing my bathroom. How do I want? How do I want that bathroom to look? And then you get to, there. You go. You know, okay. So okay. it's just variety. I, I just knew. The, I just knew the other crafty kind of stuff, but but professional. Work. Great, great. I Social work on that. Pinterest. Yeah. Who knew? Yeah. Charlie, you're gonna have to fire up your Pinterest I when know. you get home. I had no idea. There you go. What a world. All right. So so bring it down to old media here for a minute. I just wanna think for a minute about what goes on in, in ADPH around old media. That's going to media 1.0. Uh, pros and cons of email to schedule, confirm appointments. Can people log on for their labs? Uh, do we send email or text to enroll people? S reminders of things on people's phone or text? Calling, texting individual patients? In between visits, sharing our social media. What are we current? What current? What's current practice? What's going on? Unfortunately, we have to admit that there are still people in this building that don't know how to schedule an appointment. Um, Lotus notes, but um, <coughs> we do have the capability to text patients. So okay. We do call. Good. Um, we still do have the capability. Um, hopefully, in the 21st century, when we get on electronic health record. We'll have the capability to set all that up and do campaigns and stuff. Okay. But it is not happening at this time. Okay. Yeah. So, so we have the capacity. Family planning does. Family planning is texting appointments. 
Okay. Or email. Or email. Well, actually, texting from our computer. From email. From email. So it's it, secure. It's secure and it goes as a text. Okay. Great. If the patient allows. Okay. Mm -hmm. So That's we say fine. you're here for your family planning visit. We'd love to send you a reminder for your next depo shot. Is that okay? We've captured a number. Great. So we have a secure mm -hmm. text that goes out. Mm -hmm. Electronic labs, we're not there yet. No. No. Uh, appointment reminders, mm -hmm. family planning, uh, emailing, any email back and forth? Mm -hmm. I think we can do email. Yeah, okay. with, um, I had experience with a young lady who was in the military, okay. and um, that's how we communicated. I would send her a reminder, I would just say, it's time. And she, okay. That was something that she had okay. not established, so that when she was over in Afghanistan, she knew to go wow. to the wow. to, to get that taken care of. So pros and cons. Look at my list of, of, of media 1.0. Pros and cons in, in health care, in public health, of Just any of the... Said, you, know, you don't want to have a lot of information as to what's going to happen because you, there could be those situations where um, email can be... Um, someone could get into your email. You bet. Somebody gets into your email. I've got, uh, I I anybody ever had a, a story of somebody unpleasant, whatever, because they saw somebody's phone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody got one of those, right, where somebody looked at a text message that came across somebody's phone. Mm -hmm. And so, hey, girl, you're due for your depo. Might be problematic for <laughs> some little 14-year-old who hasn't quite told mama that she's... Uh... Other pros and cons. Efficiency? I got to tell you, oh, yes. calling people up, Lord have mercy. How many times we call them people, leaving a voicemail, or call them where there's no whatever versus come get your... Time for your breast cervical mm -hmm. cancer. Yeah, they don't, people don't tend to change the emails as often as they change the actual phone number. Okay, mm -hmm. so emails more uh, more uh, static. Okay. It's like Gmail. Everyone, almost everyone either has a Gmail or a Yahoo account. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's rare that you change that because it's going to be linked to your Facebook, mm -hmm. your Twitter, and all that other kind of stuff. And you can just hook it right into your Gmail calendar, so it's already there okay. when you get that okay. reminder. So a couple of thoughts I had. One, there's some real hard science about interventions, text-based interventions around immunization and other things that we all have to pay attention to. There's some real compelling science, most of it overseas, uh, but saying that text reminder for my mammogram, for my family, for my whatever, uh, HIV visit is enormous and, and patient compliance, whatever. And, and if you get the technology set up, it's, it's not that complicated to automate your system. So, so thinking about text reminder, thinking about how those interventions might advise us in ADPH. And what I'm struck by is particularly where there's the opportunity of two-way communication, how misuse of our email or our phone can, can be complicated. And I guess what I'm thinking, again, a bad, bad me, I'm going to put it real, make it real. I have a phone, I just can't manage two. I have a phone for personal and my clinical clients, and so, and one email. And so, hey, your appointment is Thursday, click. Hey, don't forget your whatever. Um, has turned into, hey, how you doing? Hey, I went to the whatever. And so, again, a lot of what we've talked about is boundary and whatever else. Recognizing that where there's a the capacity for someone to reach out to us, not know what the limits of our relationship is, be confused about the boundaries in our relationship. The idea that your client in Afghanistan, excellent reminder she's due for her depot, and girl, how was your Thanksgiving? I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want to talk to, you know, whatever. And so, so that potential where there's not some kind of firewall, different phone, ADPH email, even if that does exist, does, do you have to go back? I'd argue you may have to go back. Say, here's an appropriate use of this, and here's what isn't appropriate. I'd be, I'll raise that concern. Yes? Uh, so uh, a great quote uh, as I was doing this. Uh, again, uh, this is, is from a, a Pennsylvania family physician. I'll have the citation in a minute. But, but this guy put this up here. Uh, imagining everything on the web uh, as if... Uh, we're face to face. So the things we put on the web, and again, even if it's my personal Facebook, and I think I've protected. I mean, this is, this is how conservative this guy is, and I think there's an argument to be made. Uh, asking ourselves, if I were in a crowded hospital elevator, 
uh, would that be okay? And, and again, if I could, one of our colleagues shared an idea where someone got on their social media about a difficult patient that day. Well, I'm just venting. It's after five. I'm just venting. But if that links me to my Twitter account, at Jim, uh, ADPH, uh, STD worker, and I've said after five, whoo, I had a real cow today, or I had a real difficult day, or you'll never believe what this patient did. I'm just venting after five. And yet my hashtag links back to Jim, links back to ADPH. The answer is going to be no, because that's the potential, if not a HIPAA violation. Come on. GM. Come on. Uh, for those of us My kick children. user. These youngsters. These youngsters kicking. Well, it's probably supposed to be something else. But anyway, uh, uh, the youngsters who also get online and do gaming with other people, and mm -hmm. you know how you said you just came in, and I had a cow of a day, and I'm talking about this one. You also have to be mindful of who they are actually. Are they online really with somebody who can hear you speaking? And you probably won't use names, but you know, such and such mama came home yesterday talking about it. she saw such and such. And you know, you just really have to be careful with yeah, that because yeah. you talk about the major networks, but I mean, they can go online with these games yeah. from yeah. PlayStation, yeah. from Xbox. I mean, mm -hmm. you just really have to be careful yeah. with it across yeah. the board yep. so you don't breach anything. Yeah, no, and I understand why people said I really limit my use again i wish you could see my cousin nancy's grandkids they are so cute they are so adorable <laughs> and they're so cute and uh yeah i had a i had another example just this morning literally as i was in my motel uh an invitation to share a dropbox folder from a friend who's never shared a dropbox folder and i sort of creeped over the fence i said well yeah I said we'll need your email address and password and because I'm smart, thank you, because I'm smart, I said, hold on. I said, sure, you ain't want no Dropbox. She said, no, I am not. So there we have, again, ways in which uh, there's an argument to be conservative and a little skeptical. Mm -hmm. and, and yet the benefit of interacting with patients and family and the fun of social media. There you go. Uh, one of the, the reminders I put forward, uh, before you write it or say it or whatever, else, what if your boss was reading it? What if other patients were reading it? What if your mom was reading it? What if the health department lawyers were reading it? And if you don't have four yes answers, you better not post it, Miss Rhonda. But don't you think we have got to change our ways if we're going to remain vital? Absolutely. Like I said, if we're sitting around lugging boxes of print brochures to a health fair thinking that's the way to do public health, phew, it's time to take your retirement and go on. Absolutely. Nobody under 25, it's got to have a barcode on it, whatever else. So there's this balancing act. Uh, how do we create firewalls between our personal life and our professional life? How do we stay current? I think there's a workforce issue, Rhonda. If I ask the people in this building to develop relevant social media generation whatever you know whatever young kids need for us to do i'd argue we got a workforce that may not be ready because of the technology because of their distance from that age group um, and, and so I, I think there's a lot of questions but no we've got to get there i mean i think the point of this and i think part of why we're having this conversation we got to get there but it's a question of how we get there in ways that that meet the real needs of patients and balance our mix of privacy and time and I don't have an answer. What else? You want to say something else? Uh, see, I sort of disagree with you. Come on, now. please. We have very savvy, capable We're people. ready. Yeah, I mean, Great. well, I think your workforce is ready. <laughs> and the last part of that thought is? I can't, I mean, we have tried to send, we're the Wise Woman Program. Yes. We wanted to send out a wise wo word, a daily wise word yeah. to any woman who agrees yeah. with it. You know, just, hey, are you eating? Did you get your steps in? Blah, blah, blah. You know, which is, they have science behind it yeah. and it works. Absolutely, absolutely. And I just, every time I brought it up, I just, you know, we've tried to take it a step further. The bureaucracy. Knock it down, knock it down, knock it down. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I will stand in front of the camera and say I think it's absolutely imperative that the bureaucracy in ADPH acknowledge the reality of the world we live in and the reality of our patients' lives 
and and get ready you know get get there because the most exciting thing i've heard is people who are putting scan codes on things people who are uh, uh, reaching people via social media and I, I think that's absolutely people for whom phone apps are the way to go people for whom text based reminders about their family planning that's absolutely the way we have to go or we're going to be a bunch of old farts with boxes of brochures sitting around wondering why do we have to close another health department because you chin high in a bunch of brochures wringing your hands about I wonder why these young people aren't coming and you could answer your own question because the bureaucracy is keeping us stuck in uh, old habits and I heard EMRs I'm just gonna call that out as well I mean uh, there's there's both for your own efficiency and and for the capacity to share with consumers I mean <coughs> whose doctor allows you access in real time to lab results via a safe portal right I mean that's hello mm -hmm. and, and and so that is everybody in the room on the private side is has that benefit um, so uh, again too is I just think when bureaucracy and that whole piece of the human resource management of employees and recognizing that you've got those employees who can text yeah. our younger employees who yeah. can do several yeah. they can hear what the supervisor's saying and text and yeah and they can do double all task that. you bet you know if you an older um, wiser. less savvy say wiser less savvy supervisor may be like are you listening to what I'm saying? I yeah. You know, but it may be that, that that employee can just repeat it back verbatim right. exactly and put it in an email to <laughs> yeah. the patient at yeah. the same time. Yeah. I think that's true. Bill, your children can, can double task, can't they? They certainly can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My question would be, though, how do you control the message? Yeah. And, you bet. Uh, you know, and what do you do with the fallout that comes from, you know, errors that are sent out? Yeah, yeah. And, and I guess what, what I'd look for... If, if somebody gave me a, a high-level state job today, I'd look to create an infrastructure which is somewhat more centralized. Like I said, I think it's great that every county is doing their own thing, but I'm going to create templates here in-house. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create a Twitter account here that they can retweet at the county level. And that's, that's less big brother than if I was sitting in the RSA Tower thinking we've got 125 family planning programs and 125 people updating those Facebook pages that leaves me concerned so I'm gonna I'm gonna figure out how to get there but it's gotta be at a minimum some level of support like like I'm gonna send out tweets that I'd like people to, to retweet or I'm gonna send out a reminder or I'm gonna develop a text-based thing and all Rhonda's wise women can can tap into that text-based reminder I, I I think my concern is in the absence of leadership here I'm going to go ahead and say it. my hunch is they're saying we ain't waiting for those dinosaurs in the RSA Tower. Sorry, y'all. Uh, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get into the 21st century. And what we've done by maybe being too stuck in the bureaucracy here or, or, or not as, uh, as progressive, uh, people may be moving on without us because we got a committee study and the committee findings from the last committee meeting. And, in fact, we should have taken the lead and said the train's left. Let's, let's, let's lead from this building. Consultants saying that, not anybody who's an ADPH staffer. Uh, you better watch your privacy if you can. I love this line, if you know how, because uh, it is, uh, again, all of our social media allow us some, some sense of privacy, and yet, at the same time, to say no one's ever, ever, ever going to find, I just don't think you can do it. I mean, I think you can block, allow, not allow, limit, uh, via privacy settings. I think it's really tough. What do you think, Liz? I'm just thinking you also got to go back and check your privacy levels after those updates are done because yeah. things are going to get yeah. changed. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it, there, are, there are ways to minimize how much people know about you in the world. I think a limit. What do you say? See why? I don't use <laughs> There you go. I'm, I'm trying to talk you into it. Go I'm trying to. I'm going to show you my cousin's grandchildren. You're going to be on Facebook. You go, you're going to be pleased. I just had this uh, experience with a colleague yesterday. Administrators of pages, mm -hmm. like for example, yeah. if with for with the ADPH page, you need to make sure that um, the administrators are literally linked and available um, to catch something. Yeah. What happened was a person posted something on a a page yeah. that wasn't necessarily 
accurate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they received it, and they they went to another website to get the information. Yeah. And it's not one of those trusted websites. But yeah. It's readily right. used. Sure. And and they made us they made a comment on their Facebook page, yeah. and yeah. the big person saw this and said, this has to be taken out you immediately. I can't have medical you know, misinformation. And what happened was it bypassed two administrators yeah. of the actual page. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I, that things like that, you know, when you set up a page, you know, you're going to always have an administrator, but, you know, you need to at least have another or maybe two yeah. that, that's going to back you up because what if you're not there? Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, well, and, and or limit who can comment. Right. I mean the other the other decision. So just so we're all clear, you got to have a Facebook to create a you have a personal Facebook to create a page. So so it, it sort of branches off from that. The idea here is if you're going to allow public comment and it says ADPH, you better monitor those comments because otherwise I'm going to do a screenshot and say, oh, they said as long as you douche after sex. Right. <laughs> My cousin said, just dush all that, that live semen up inside you, you're going whatever else. I go, oh, That's Lord have mercy, do not and dush and that live semen. That you saw this on um, ADPH. Yeah, and then, and then your side note that you got it from mm -hmm. um, AOL.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so again, some people monitor all, some people leave it static so people can't comment. So, so the, uh, anybody's going to, you know, again, do I keep it open to the public? Do I, how do I invite people? And all these decisions have to be made. And again, Bill, why that some sort of centralized set of recommendations, if it's not managed here, some pretty firm recommendations, le real leadership from ADPH leadership is what, I, what I'd say gets us around that. So YouTube, like I said, it's videos showing there's you. Uh, I think this is Mayo Clinic. Who is this? Oh, no, this is, uh, oh, just how to do physical examination. So, so again, you could see how to colposcopy, and oh, my Lord, you could see it on the web. I, uh, I, I had a, an orthopedic surgery last year, and, and my uh, orthopedic surgeon invited me to YouTube to look at it. They sent me a link. I watched about 45 seconds. And I said, I do not want to know how they're going to take a chainsaw to my leg. <laughs> and so I chose to not, but it was accessible by YouTube. Uh, here's the tweet of, uh, so again, 140 characters, uh, people talking about uh, uh, patient interaction. Again, the way it works, you decide who to follow, who you want to follow. It's sort of a, a joint, do I want to follow it? Here's... Uh, uh, the, the, the hashtag is, uh, there, there's some example, ha hashtag medicine, hashtag healthcare. Uh, the at sign is the username, so you create a username, at Jim. I'm not, I'm not a Twitter user. Are you a Twitter? Are you a no, tweet? You, too much. Too much. It goes too fast. I mean, you know, it's like constantly. Yeah, 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 you're watching it all. Anybody, tweet, any, anybody tweeting? Tweeters? Oh, yeah. I, got no, I got no tweeters in the room. Uh, retweet means, I've used that term before, means I'm following uh, somewhere. One of those had Dr. Oz. I love my Dr. Oz. And so I follow Dr. Oz and then, oh, Dr. Oz said something smart today. I'm going to retweet that to the people who follow me and say, oh, Dr. Oz says we're all too skinny or all need to do something or other. So uh, live surgery, yes, they are, y'all. This is, this is, again, what's going on in terms of our uh, professional uh, development. Uh, people are, are are micro blogging, doing live surgery on their tweet. So so the tweets are limited to 140 characters, but you can link to video. You can view video within within your Twitter account. So I'm actually watching uh, somebody. I am not watching. You could in theory. I would make my stomach upset, but you could in theory <laughs> watch. We've already talked about that. Uh, so healthcare institutions, uh, sort of online. Boy, if I were to call somebody out, it's the Mayo Clinic. Uh, as being ahead of the curve in terms of healthcare organizations, website tweeting their website is phenomenal. Uh, I, I it, they do a good job of 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 coming up on your search engine, but in terms of their their patient information, information in healthcare, probably as good as anybody in the country in terms of a major medical institution saying we're we're in the the 21st century and we are involved in social media, electronic media, and their their dissemination of usable public health stuff, I, and I, I've got no vested, I should just, we should have said, I have no vested commercial interest in Mayo Clinic, it's just they do a great job, and, and, and again, personally, somebody I use. Uh, healthcare organizations on social media, there's some examples of, uh, 
uh, Academy of Family Physicians, just uh, various journals. I guess the other thing we hadn't talked about in terms of the use of uh, use of social media is, is uh, again, in, in, instead of I'm waiting for my journal to come, you know, uh, again, talk about what else is, I'm waiting for the mail so I can get my paper journal. Uh, that's also dying like so many other things, like, like the printed brochure. Uh, I'm getting access even as subscribers. Anybody getting professional journals online now? Not, not getting mail anymore? Yeah. So, so again, the idea that, oh, this particular thing I used to go to a mailbox for, like, the same thing we talked about, postage, printing, lugging it from whatever else, as opposed to hit send and everybody got their monthly journal, quarterly journal. So, uh, uh, again, most of us have access. Government agencies, U.S. Centers for Disease Control, good people, are they not, Rhonda? CDC? Good people. Funding Rhonda, so I... Uh, uh, doing a good job. HRSA, uh, Medicaid Service Center for Medicaid Services, uh, again, doing uh, good work uh, online. Um, uh, by health topics, most of you you know, people uh, doing a search. This is an Ebola search, but again, uh, search any health topic. Zika, Zika is out there. And again, what we've raised that I just want to name is certainly at YouTube, unless it's copywritten, it's up there without any checks and balances. So as we talk about health, Facebook, uh, in, the, in the absence of an administrator, if it's on my personal Facebook or page that I manage, I'm talking about, I guess I'm going to say this, um, there's some really bad misinformation about, about vaccination, some bad science about vaccination. And, and we look at use of social media as people that are opposed to uh, vaccine use with bad science, and it's concerning to me. But yet, if it's my personal YouTube, it's my personal Twitter account, you can't do nothing because how in America do we manage free speech on social media? So again, good news, bad news. If I, you tell me I got a health problem, I'm fit to go home and Google this thing, good news or bad news, what comes up early in my search may or not be medically accurate. One of the, the elephant in the room is our patients don't have the capacity, many of our patients don't have the capacity to determine the accuracy of this information. And so uh, concern up here, well, I saw it pop up, so I put it in the, the ADPH Facebook. Uh, again, how many of your frontline nurses, st a conversation starts with, well, I read online, or my cousin forwarded me something. And how much time do ADPH staff s spend debunking uh, whatever, sometimes because of social media, right? Uh, there's an example of, of LinkedIn. Like I said, I, I'm not as concerned about uh, LinkedIn only because I don't think a lot of our uh, staff are not. Every single web page, it seems to me, has the option, do you want to share this or not? Whereas you used to go, surely in the back of the day, you'd say, oh, my girlfriend uh, uh, would love that, so I'm going to go to the photocopier for a name and copy this article. Remember those days, Charlene? I'm going to go copy. I'm going to carry that copy down yeah. to Renee and say, hey, girl, I made a photocopy. <laughs> well, that's also dead. I feel like I've been a bearer of bad news. That, <laughs> kind, of, kind of some tough love here in my talk today. That's dead as well. You're just going to hit like or send or something. If you say like, share on my Facebook, because uh, Renee's on my Facebook, I'm going to share with her. It says, right, it says, or not. I think what's important about that is we start to lose control over who gets what and where. And once you start liking and sharing and sending, uh, just be mindful that you know who you're sending, that you control that network. And again, one of the ways I'm talking about confidentiality breach and also just too much information. Raise your hand. I get too much darn information. Please stop liking and sharing and whatever else. I mean, I think the other reality is we're kind of an information overload. And so, so misuse uh, of, of that is important. This is the, uh, for physicians, but, but there's also some good stuff for other healthcare providers in this. Uh, this is a resource that, that I use to, to update the, uh, this talk, primary care and social media, just the basics of, of social media in that whatever else. Not going to do that. How have you handled a Facebook request? Accept, decline, ignore. What do you do? Ignore. 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 Right <laughs> Facebook people. Stacy, you're not Facebook. She's not not there. Are you Facebook, brother? Oh yeah. 
Ignore it. Do you have, have you had a, a patient request? Uh, ignore. Ignore. Okay. So I think or it's decline. 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 Ignore. Ooh. Decline. And I think if you have an ongoing, <laughs> if you have an ongoing relationship, I think it's good practice to come back and talk about that. Mm -hmm. the, the recommendation I always make is if it's someone you're going to see, I'm thinking uh, somebody's a regular uh, clinic patient or, or you've got a relationship, you're going to see them again next time, uh, I, I'm going to, see, you know, in a, in a really, uh, not acknowledge the intent, hey, hey, buddy, I saw that you wanted to do whatever and, and maintain connections. Uh, that's not something that's appropriate because of my role here, and I'm sorry about that, but that's why I, I, I haven't paid attention to that. I, I, I'm glad you come here for services. I really want, I value this connection, but after five and that there's kind of a wall between my personal life and, and this work and just kind of catch up. I've had uh, previous, previous clients um, that have um, requested and um, what I tend to do is I'll ignore it for a while, but I'll go, if their pages are open, I'll go and look on their pages and see what kind of activity that they have okay. going on. Okay. And um, if it's something that I, because my page is my page and I don't like a lot of junk okay. or inappropriate stuff, yeah. um, then I don't, I don't friend them. And yeah. if I happen to see them, because I don't live where I used to work anymore. Yeah, okay. And um, so if I see them, then, you know, they say, well, I sent you a request and I, I'll tell them why. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. You know, you, your stuff is just too much. Yeah. And, <laughs> <laughs> I don't that too much. <laughs> yeah, but I don't do that. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or, or make them an acquaintance. There you yeah. go. There you go. Please. I just want to be back on what she said. She said she looks at it if they would want the client. Yeah. But for me, I wrestle with the ethical dilemma yeah. of once a client, always a client. There you go. And so I would not, not even, even if their stuff is all... You know, fairy dust and, and roses. And yeah, yeah. Uh, when when does a client stop being a client? I think the most conservative is always. I've I've heard two years as a marker. What do people think? Always. A, always. always. You have to look at our clientele too. Normally, it's um. Normally, they're coming back for. So we're not discharging forever. And they're not seeing you particularly, but they're receiving services somewhere now. In the climate. Yeah. So just to play it safe. Yeah. yeah. If it's not them, it's going to be their child or yeah. something. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, patients are using social media, not you. Uh, what, what's, what's unique here is about how to review a doctor, find a doctor, find a health clinic. And I, I guess I, I raise this just because. We're going to get liked or unliked or zinged on Yelp, y'all. The other part of the world we live in is our reputation as healthcare providers. And, and so just kind of recognizing that sort of how people pick. You know, if you found out you needed to see a person, someone gave you a name of a subspecialist, what's the first thing you're going to do? I'm going to Google them, and I'm going into health grades and seeing what their deal is, aren't you? I want to see how, who graded them and what the comments are. And Blue Cross Blue Shield, when, on their app, you, you can rate your physician there. And yeah. So, I mean, it's out yeah. there, definitely. Yeah. The other nice thing, again, mixed bag, is the social support for chronic disease. Mm -hmm. I want to show you that real quick. So your patient preferences, we talked about that. Chronic disease support groups, lifestyle groups. Anybody on a let's get skinny, let's get fat group? Uh, or let's get skinny. I guess we don't want to get, well, maybe you want to get fat. I don't know. Let's get fit. Let's get fit. Let's, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there. And, and again, like any peer stuff, there is a lovely connection with people who have the same condition supporting one. Here's a, a, a diabetes thing, uh, really lovely kind of talk to other diabetics, but we lose control over the content. Is it all medically accurate information? And so I guess if I were working front line with patients, I'd say, look, there's a great diabetes source out there. There's a Crohn's disease community out there. There's an arthritis community out there. And some of that medical information may or may not be controlled by healthcare workers. So I, what I'm going to say is the healthcare providers, I'd like you to use that as a resource but come back and stay in conversation with me. So I'd, I'd, I'd let people know about it. I want to have communication about it. And, and I'd want to, as a public health person, I'd want to value the support because I think especially uh, if, if you're struggling, I'm thinking newly diagnosed people really struggle with the, the, the newly diagnosed. Something's hard to manage. I swear to you, I could never. I'm, the idea of managing complex diabetes is just baffling to me how you measure your blood sugar all day long and adjust 
your starches and your I couldn't do it. You know, my math skills are just not there. So, so the idea that people might reach out around certain chronic diseases for people with that support. Uh, again, here's the example. One in four Internet users living with those conditions have gone online. And, and so if Rhonda's people are typical in the Wise Woman program, they're the fastest growing group of social media users on their phone. One in four with uh, those chronic conditions are online to find other people similar conditions. Again, one of the advantages of Wise Woman is that it creates that peer network within the program. Uh, if this is the reality, then I guess as we start to think about chronic disease management, we better infer from this that it's human nature for people who want to find that. And then what do we do? How do we screen for those peer sites? How do we encourage people to stay in dialogue with us and offer the caution? Ain't nobody checking the medical accuracy of that. You want to get in? Rhonda, did you have something? Well, we encourage our people to participate in the, this one, the net, the latest one is the Go Red Get Fit. It's the heart associations. It's a a media whatever, yeah. you know, where you join this group and they talk about diet and Great. exercise right. and and the CDC encourages us to do that you kind bet. of stuff. You bet. No, again, the reality is if that's what people want and any of us who try to lose weight or stop smoking or cut back on our drinking or donut use, you know, fill in the blank for yourself, finding other people to support us and that is human nature and, and efficacy of 12-step groups. And so if it, it's just now online, instead of driving to a church basement and saying, I'm Jim, I'm powerless over donuts, people are going to go online and say, hey, anybody else trying to stop? What's the website again, Ron? Go Red, Get Fit. Go Red, Get Fit. You know, and I'm Please. thinking back about what she said and thinking about some of the, the groups that I participate in, like Everyone is always trying to eat healthy. Yeah. And I'm in a particular food group, and you know, you got a thousand people, and they're sharing their actual recipes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for some of us like that live in the South, you know, hey, there's nothing better than dropping something in some hot Crisco. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. I mean, so but if you, you know, when you get to see that one thing that you love dropped in that Crisco, but hey, it's got a different spin on it, yeah. and now yeah. it's healthy. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah. You yeah. know, might try that. Super. So it has its advantages, you know. Can you friend request Bill on that Crisco recovering Crisco? <laughs> he's, he's still weeping about it. <laughs> <Great Lord. laughs> uh, grief support again. Just some more examples of what exi what exists on uh, this is a resource. I want to make sure people know if you've got somebody and you think about Lord, what's out there and how do we screen? This is a resource that that does some screening for uh, accurate, medically accurate social media. Webicina, W-E-B-I-C-I-N-A. Sometimes the A on their logo shows up as an at sign. In the web address, it's not the at sign. So W-E-B-I-C-I-N-A dot com. So in other words, somebody, somebody says, hey, I'm the only one with Crohn's disease. I'm the only one with rheumatoid arthritis. I'm the only one with breast cancer. You can say, hey, friend, let's, let's together look for uh, whatever else. So I want to move forward. We're almost out of time. More health information online. Uh, uh, your, uh, just some thoughts about your online reputation. I talked about people uh, monitoring us, putting sites up. Again, I hope we're using uh, uh, good health care practice because it's ethically the right thing to do. Uh, but I think in the age of, of Internet, we also need to be mindful that poorer customer service comes back to haunt us and and some of that is not justified somebody's just mad because they didn't get the answer they wanted I, I do feel like uh, you know when you look at some of those sites that, that rank how the health care was some of them look like crazy people that did and some of them look like people that had valid concerns about health care that wasn't done well so we are in a, a consumer world and, uh, and and certainly if we're going to continue to succeed and thrive in public health, thinking like the private sector, thinking about our reputation, thinking about customer service is critical to our succeeding. Again, you guys know that. Uh, I want to spend much time on Google Plus, uh, uh, ways to for healthcare workers to connect. There, there's some particular sites w uh, where uh, uh, physicians can connect with other physicians. Uh, uh, in terms of how you connect, uh, I, I always start with think about your website, think about the quality of your website. Also think about search engine optimization, SEO, search engine 
optimization. Here's the question. If you do a search on a term and up in a search engine and up comes a list of 10 options, how many times, how many pages below that first page do you go? Search engine optimization means you're going to key into the program so Monroe County Health Department comes up <coughs> in the first set of answers. If you're buried, I don't, they, they say nobody goes past the second page. Say you Google coffee cake recipe, here's the first list. Well, I'm not sure. Uh, let me see another page. Who goes to the third page for coffee? I'm going to pick one off those first two, right? So search engine optimization, your computer guys ought to be setting in motion. So again, as we think about how we're going to do uh, uh, our job, thinking about the technological side, Rhonda talked about the workforce, I'd make sure the workforce has some capacity to do search engine optimization. So in any internet search, uh, my health department, my program comes up near the top. Uh, uh, what's the incentive? Uh, for uh, for us, uh, well, first is patient satisfaction. People are happier. Uh, we get accurate communication out. Getting better at social media means uh, better use of means uh, better uh, use of the the relationship. Again, we talk about patient-centered medical home as a model that I don't think is going to go away. It's hard <laughs> to know what the future holds, but I think the idea we want people to get in the health department as their medical home stay there, use us moving forward. Uh, let me keep moving. Uh, what are your guidelines? This is a, at the health department level, what are your guidelines? Who's got time? Uh, let's make sure we have the right people, the right role. What's our message? What's the site? And, and again, if you need to clean up, somebody who's a communications professional like at reputation.com to clean up any bad stuff. I'm going to move forward. Uh, guidelines, again, I gave you this citation earlier, it's there in your slides, really was helpful in terms of preparing this, but also uh, just some really good information about how to use social media. Uh, final resources there, again, I bragged on the Mayo Clinic, no financial interest in what they do, but excellent uh, communication materials for this uh, talk. I was able to use some really good stuff from the Mayo Clinic website, uh, and, and then the, the AMA policy on uh, social media. Uh, uh, CDC obviously is at the forefront of helping health communications people and some thoughts about that. Uh, uh, your rules of what you do offline, there's no, there's no boundary at 5 o'clock anymore. What you do at 515. Uh, second reminder, there error is going to occur and, and nobody's got, got this thing figured out. So figuring out your media policy, figuring out how to get better at it, learn from your mistakes. Uh, uh, great power in conversation, but understanding the risk and benefit. That's really why I was here. So anyway, those of you who are scared, fire up that computer, fire up that phone. I have nothing else. I'm going to show you my cousin. Uh, my thanks go out to the Alabama Wise Woman program that, that helped support this, uh, the social work for the video folks. Uh, those two, three citations of, of people that the internet, and as always, my mom and dad. So uh, anyway, it's been my pleasure helping us think about use of social media, the ethical challenges of uh, social media, how we move into the 21st century in a way that's ethical. So uh, thanks to my live audience for being here today. And Renee, thanks to you for uh, inviting me. I'll turn it back to you to wrap Thank up. Thank you so much. And this is certainly a topic that impacts us both professionally but also personally. Mm -hmm. So we appreciate your time very much. And we want to thank all of you who have joined us today on the Alabama Public Health Training Network.